show. Taking down the other podcasts one by one. Who are these social? That clip is why people make fun of you. With Carl. This is all just for the radio. And why Mike? We don't have business to take care of. Who are these social? We are the number one podcast on the internet today. W-A-T-S. Welcome to yet another episode of WATS, the show thousands of people come to to learn the age-old question, what's the deal with social media? If you can find a show that knows more about social media, I'll let Craig host WATP because there is no show that knows more about social media. I'm your host, Carl Hamburger. With me, as always, is Mike Geary, a.k.a. Blind Mike. What's up, Mike? Sappers clear the way, airborne all the way. General Geary reporting for duty. Hello, everybody. I know. Now that you, you're best friends with Mr. O- Ojeda. Uh, yeah, is he I'm an honorary general. Me? He told me that. <laughs> is he going to be replacing me on the show anytime soon now that you guys are BFFs? No, I mean, Richard even talked. We'll go down to Florida. The four of us can hang. Four <laughs> pals. Yep. <laughs> Sounds good. Some people are saying I won't read your super chats. And you know what? Maybe I won't. I guess you'll have to super chat in order to find out whether I'll read your super chats or not. Make sure it's working, guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure it's working. Uh, I, can, can we still get euros? Uh, let's try that. And then uh, pounds. Now, yeah, the, the over $20 setting is not is on the fritz, so see if that works. Radish Diff is very excited about world-famous banter, and that's what we're doing here. We are starting off. We have this banter, Mike and I, back and forth. It's fantastic. People love it. It could be the whole show eventually. We, yeah. we might morph into just the banter show because people love this part the best. That's why we start with it. And and there's not I, enough of it in podcasting. No, right. Just off the cuff, just having a conversation, just two buds catching up is what I like to say. Absolutely. So I want to tell you, Mike, I always kind of introduce what the banter is going to be. Maybe someday that'll change. I don't know. Mike's kind of a lazy guy, but what? I'll do it. It's fine. <laughs> I'm okay with it. I'll banter you all day, son of a bitch. <laughs> no, I mean, listen, I know my role. It's doing all the work. I get it. So I'll start off. Um, Sarah sent in a new Super Chat jingle for us, and I'm very excited about this. Now, Sarah has sent in a lot of great songs and jingles for WATP and the Creep Off, including the uh, the Florida song you hear on the Creep Off that's uh, to the music of Gloria. Ah. That's great. And uh, Skinny Chad Zumach is coming in with, uh, with $2. Cool. I'm not your bro. I'm not your friend, Carl. Well, you know what? Skinny Chad Zumak, who, by the one way, won the Dabble Battle at uh, DabbleCon, I'll point out. Wow. Yeah, Bad very mom. impressive stuff. Right, very impressive stuff. Um, so I will, because he gave us a Super Chat, I will play you the brand new Super Chat jingle from Sarah. All right. Super, Super Chat, Super Chat now. Carl's gonna read a Super Chat. Woo. Super Chat. That is correct, Sarah. I will be reading the super chat. It's a little lengthy for a super chat jingle, but that's all right. I like it. I love it. But can I can I point out that when Carl introduced that, he said, uh, Mike's lazy. I, I do all the work. Now, here's something someone else put together for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you notice that? <laughs> but I had to, like, download it, put it on the board. You listened to it. It was a whole thing. I get it. It's, it was a whole thing. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Let's start off. We've been doing a lot of uh, music lately on the show because yes. the music that happens on social media, you can't hear it anywhere else. And some of it is ridiculous. <laughs> And I want to start off with with this song. Now, this came in and um, it's called Love Marriage. The great Sea Moose sent this in. This is an Indian fella and he's very excited about being married to someone he loves. Now, I guess in India, that doesn't happen very often. Okay. <laughs> and this is a song to his mom and dad. He wants to let them know. He doesn't want an arranged marriage. He wants to marry the woman that he loves. Okay. Well, it's He's a different culture. Exci- I'll go in with an open mind here. He's very excited very about weird, the, but... the prospect 
of this potentially happening for him. This song wasn't picked for Night at the Roxbury. I think this one would have worked <laughs> just it as well. Have, yeah, I think if you dissected the lyrics, it might not fit, but it's the perfect vibe. Okay, good point. Good point. Mommy, Daddy, you have been good to me, sending me to Pali Kuda, making me tea. Now the wife you want to find, arrange marriage you have on the I will read those lyrics in case you missed it. Please. M- Mommy, Daddy, you have been good to me, sending me to Palakuda, making me tea. Now the wife you want to find, arrange marriage you have on the mind. I want the love marriage. I want the love marriage. I want the love marriage. Don't want arrange marriage. <laughs> He's being very obvious about this. The techno style is such an interesting choice. I don't know enough about the Indian culture, but it seems like an odd melody to go to. Yeah. Well, listen, I can dance to it. That's all I know. I'm bobbing my head, baby. I'm loving it. I don't know if mom and dad are going to respond to this well, but I like it. Here comes the second verse coming up here. All right, those lyrics were Mommy, Daddy, I like the girl across the street. So pretty in her chutathar makes my heart beat. I think she will be a very good wife. Bear many grandchildren in quick time. This is how this guy is thinking. He's just like, I can't wait to get married and knock a girl up and have a bunch of kids. <laughs> like you're you're doing this wrong, buddy. I don't know what you're thinking. It takes a tremendous amount of work to be that literal lyrically. You'd think you would stumble upon a metaphor <laughs> yeah. at some point. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> like accidentally. Not, a, not at all. <laughs> uh so then it goes on to talk about how he wants a love marriage. <laughs> I want the love marriage. I want the love marriage. I want the love marriage. <laughs> on the video, it shows love marriage, and then there's like a box and there's a check mark in it. <laughs> <laughs> I will be checking the love marriage aside from the arranged marriage. Thank you very much. This is nice to see like the evolution of music because like when I was a kid, like Green Day and Blink One Eighty Two were popular. Sure. And they were all about telling your mom and dad to go fuck themselves. Right. So it's nice that now we live in a world where it's like, mommy, daddy, listen, let's be reasonable here. <laughs> like, the girl across the street seems pretty swell. <laughs> Don't want that age and then it shows a range marriage and there's a, a red X next to that. Mm, from all right. Face. <laughs> Listen, there's no way to misinterpret the message here. We get it. All right. So, what does he mean? <laughs> I hope that works out for you. Good luck with that. I don't know if that's the style of music your parents enjoy, but hopefully it is. And they'll understand. All right. All right. You know what? Fine. <laughs> Marry the gal of your dreams. Last week, I played for you a Jerry Banfield, I think he called it trap music. Yes. It was about uh, the chick from yoga class that he was very excited about. I don't have to go through the whole thing. You're Again, right. very little literal. <laughs> yes. And I point out, I go, I don't know if this is Jerry's channel. Cause it was like Jerry Banfield music. And there was like, it was brand new. Right. So I didn't know what was going on. And then check this out. It turns out Jerry definitely made that video. My friends, I made purpose. my first 
full-length trap music video yesterday. I put this on a brand new channel, Jerry Banfield Music, because Lord knows you never just upload everything to one channel. This video is going to play the entire video for you here to show you what I made. And then I did this full-length live stream on Twitch yesterday. So uh, I'm, I've downloaded the video and I'm putting the entire live stream after the video to show you to have a record of exactly how I made this. Because what's really cool about this video is I came to uh, the studio with the lyrics yesterday but i did everything else i made the beat recorded the song made a short preview video as you can see up here and then i cranked out this music video with stock footage i did all of it <laughs> on the live stream which that was the most amazing i know that was the most amazing part when he explains that he's the one who put the stock footage in. i was like oh god i was hoping that wasn't you it doesn't even make sense and at one point there's a guy on the beach just doing yoga by himself and this is a, a song about having a crush on some girl in your class like it doesn't make any fucking sense, Jerry, but apparently he's the one who did this. That's what all the great directors are known for. Like, you should see the B-roll that Spike Lee yep. uses. It's incredible. That I mean, I did say last week that's what really made the video was the B-roll. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's a good point. He's yeah. bragging about that. He's right. <laughs> Maybe he saw me talking about it. Just like, yeah, this guy gets it. I don't know. It, it's fascinating. I think that's what this show exposes more than anything is – not just how talented people think they are, enough to put it on social media, how yeah. multi-talented people think they are. Like, you know, Jerry, I, I don't know a ton about Jerry Banfield. He's what, a political commentator? Is that what his podcast is? No, not at all. Jerry Banfield got on my radar because he was going on and explaining how to, he, he was giving um, financial advice. Oh, okay. Fine. And then it turns out he's $600,000 in debt. <laughs> hey so those who ins- can't do you know right yeah so it was insane <laughs> and his financial advice was great he goes now i was bringing in ten thousand dollars a month from various social media platforms but i was spending twenty thousand dollars a month so it turns out that wasn't a good investment <laughs> like yeah no shit you're losing ten thousand a month this is easy math jerry what are you doing <laughs> and he did that for years Hey, it's the it's the finance version of who are these podcasts? We invest so you don't have to. <laughs> right. He, he makes all the mistakes for you. He makes all the mistakes. <laughs> so this is great because this video that we're watching right now is almost four hours long, and it's called "How I Made My Tuesday Yoga Crush Music Video Live on Twitch in Under Four Hours." Oh, good. So this video that we watched that we goofed on because it's terrible. He then made a four hour video explaining how he made that terrible video. Who the fuck would watch this? He has 273,000 subscribers to his YouTube channel. This has 134 views in nine days. Wow. So no one's I'm interested tired. in this. No one's looking for this information, but he's going to tell it to us anyway. Which is so cool. So we've got one subscriber, which is me. Yeah, that's me. Yep, yep. Yeah, there's one subscriber, and that's me. <laughs> Everybody who watched the video is somebody I texted it to. I've also put the video up if you want to go be a fanboy on every platform. The video is also up on Twitter and on Facebook. So I put it up on both of these platforms as well. And uh, yeah, thanks for your love and support. If you want the music videos, I'll keep putting up the yes. videos on demand Please. on Jerry Banfield on the, my main channel. And then this music channel will have just the pure videos without all the other stuff, plus shorts as well. So thanks a lot for your love and support. Here goes the video Tuesday Yoga Crush that I made yesterday. He's so proud of himself. <laughs> He's playing it Hey, again. yo, Jeremy, your boy got yoga getting off on Tuesday. <laughs> got your girl in the front. She say yoga. Imagine making this song and then going, all right, I'm getting a lot of requests to understand how I pulled this one off. I'm Let sure me explain point, to you. He told himself, like, well, Hearts of Darkness got way more respect than Apocalypse Now, even. So they want to <laughs> see the behind the scenes stuff. So Jerry Banfield Music, his new YouTube channel, now has... 16 subscribers Woo. i am i am subscribed i will tell you that right now and he's putting up some shorts that i wanted to uh play for you here because this is great it's called don't wait another whisper song hashtag twitch oh, so he's i guess really diving into music here <laughs> yes and and mike i didn't know what whisper songs were i would have you know what if you asked me what's a whisper song i would have said riders on the storm 
Because <laughs> okay. Jim Morrison definitely did a pass where he's just whispering. Sure. But, but this, this is a whole new level. I'm not familiar with this. I might be an idiot. It's very possible. Hey, how you doing, Big Granny? Let me whisper in your ear. Tell you something that you will love to hear. Gonna open your phone and see that Twitch app. I hear you asking, what's that crap? Let me get that remote for the TV. Turn that off and you'll be free. Now get out your laptop, Mac or PC, and go to twitch.tv. Sign up for an account with the password you can account. Grab your wallet and take out your card. Don't worry, you're safe and not too hard. Buy some bits and drop a sub. Throw out some gifts, grab me some grub. Now sit back and relax. Let me entertain you. It's nothing else you need. Hey, Granny, wait to see my Twitch. Hey, Do you know how creepy this is? <laughs> he sounds like yeah, a rapist. You're looking at it wrong, Carl. Because yeah. of the world of ASMR, there's probably someone jerking off to this somewhere. So that's, he's really doing a service if you think about it. More than just me, you're saying. Okay. Well, if you <laughs> <Yeah>. say so. <laughs> More than us in this room. We're jerking off. To <laughs> hey, Granny, wait to see my Twitch. Wait to see my Twitch. Hey, Granny, wait to see my Twitch. I'm going to be that one. <laughs> so there's hey, something else on here. Granny, let me whisper to you. Sorry, I don't know why that started up again. God damn it. All, the other All right, well, there's something else on here that I wanted to play for you because he also put up this seven I am affirmations I use daily for strength and inspiration. Okay. Now, I don't know if you're an affirmation guy, Mike. Not really, no. Your therapist doesn't tell you to do that? No, I'm, okay. I'm willing to I, I keep an open mind about it if Jerry convinces me otherwise. But Okay. I just want to tell you, I watched this just like a few minutes ago, okay. and it gets crazy pretty quick. I got to okay. say, I, I I was with them at first, and then I'm like, wait, what? I am happy. I am healthy. I am wealthy. I am wise. I am safe. I am love. I am God. I am happy. <laughs> wait a second. I am God? <laughs> that escalated quickly, didn't it? He just threw Whoa. that one in there. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck was that? I'm... He's just you, saying things to convince. He's like, I'm your husband. He just sends it to girls. That he knows. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh... Yay, super chats. Blinky Jedi two bucks. Is Potato Chip King on Army Major Steel's Valor? Oh, whoa, whoa, that. whoa. I won't have that kind of talk about my buddy. Yeah, come on. We've, we've formed alliances over here it's now. Ridiculous. We can't do that. I'm building bridges. Nava, Nava down south, five bucks. Podcast with Blind Mike Stutcho and Ojeda would be fire. <laughs> it'd, it'd, be ter- <laughs> it'd be terrible, sir. <laughs> what do you mean? I would, I would moderate some good political talk. <laughs> Flex 316 with two Australian dollars. Carl, open gifting. Oh, do I not have gifting open? What? I have to open that? Guys, get a membership. Get a membership on our YouTube channel. You get all the exclusive content that I put out for Patreon and Supercast. We're doing a bonus show tomorrow. Who are these broadcasters debuts? The pilot episode with Christian Blatt. I didn't know I had to open gifting. Thank you, Flex316. I will do that. I come buckets, two bucks. Carl's doing a beloved Super Chat scam on Discord. Um, Okay, so Dave from Buffalo, his brother almost died in a motorcycle accident. And so he has a, not a go, is it GoFundMe? Yeah, I think it's GoFundMe. Uh, so I put a, I put a link if anyone wants to support Dave from Buffalo. That's all. Tale as old as time. You just got to Venmo Carl and he's going to write a check See? to someone else. And you know what? He, he sent it to Vinny too. And Vinny called me. He goes, what should we do about this? I go, it's GoFundMe. I'm sure it's legit. It's not one of these scams. It's fine. Yeah. Go to his GoFundMe. It's whoarethese.com. If you bring that up. How dare you. And then CMOS 4044 with five euros. I know you won't read this, but once again, I am looking forward to the Tourette segment. Oh, I got a fun Tourette segment for you. We'll get there. Today for sure. But we're still in the music segment. And Ryan Rubalkin, friend of the show, yes. he sent in a, uh, a recommendation. He said, this guy is buying Instagram ads to promote this content. Yeah, so he told me that he was uh, scrolling through Instagram and this was a sponsored ad. So oh, evidently no. this guy is paying for for this type of promotion and he literally i went with the most recent video or maybe second most recent because he yeah. told me basically any video is worth 
<laughs> the sponsorship paid off because he learned that any video was worth a watch. Ryan Shane Owen. Check out this talent. Duck in the city in the night of the wild. See me in the subway. What will you want me to give me a sign? And catch me really in the clothes of the eye. The title of this is Hungry Like the Wolf Cover. Yeah. Oh, you didn't write this one? No shits. I had no idea. Also, you got to work on your tempo, buddy. You are really rushing through this one, my friend. I like his take on it because I think he kind of looks at his talent and says, well, let's at least get this done as quickly as possible. <laughs> that, might, that might be what's going on. <laughs> Carl Wubstuttering John just became a member of our YouTube channel. Thank you for that. Ooh. <laughs> Fine. Radish diff to two euros. Uh, yet to see a rude interruption. Those days over. Oh, no, 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 no. I'll be very rude to Mike Geary. Don't you worry about that. Let me get on that. a roll. He'll interrupt me. Yes. You should see what happens before the show. We have a little banter <laughs> before the show where I'm very rude to Mike. I'll be putting that out in a box set. He doesn't tell me he's here. I'm like, Carl, I th is that your camera on? He won't respond to me. <laughs> <laughs> Touch with the ground, I will the hunt I'm after you. Slide like a sound, boss is a pound, and I'm home like the wolf. Try the line, this one rhyme. How would I want I'm after you? The other thing that got me about this guy is like, so he's paying for Instagram ads and shit, and that doing covers of song it's like not even original material so he's like does he even know the lyrics it sounds like he's doing like what i do and i'm singing along this song and then it and then i'm after you he's like i know like a couple of them hungry like a wall you know it's like it's not good like we're in the song first guys i know you've heard hungry like a wolf but you haven't heard me do it you might want to check this out all right yay super chats the Blatcast. About time Christian Blast started paying me money. Five bucks. Ooh. He says, please gift so people could check out our new show tomorrow at 3 Eastern. Carl, do I get half of this Super Chat money back or is that only during our show? Actually, Christian, you get less than half because YouTube takes 30%. YouTube takes their cut. It's a whole right. thing, Christian, you know? Yeah. So You'll learn. It's, yeah, it's it's not good. And uh well, we'll talk about it off air, obviously. <laughs> You've we'll, signed a bad deal. <laughs> we'll, de <laughs> we'll debate this <laughs> off air. All right. That's enough of Duran Duran. Let's move over to TikTok. TikTok's a psyop by the Chinese to fuck up the minds of our youth and some other people too. So let's talk quite a lot about these TikTokers we stalk and know. Oh, 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 oh. TikTok fucking blows. Starting off with your buddy Dat Fan. Well, of course. Dat Fan, and this is what you wrote to me. This is the whole clip as he posted it. This is what I, he thinks. I felt that was important because yes. people now know Dat Fan is a rival of mine. They're probably thinking, Mike, you're out to sabotage this man. Mm -hmm. You're taking things out of context. No, no, my friends. This was the video as it was posted to his TikTok page. Just so this. Hi. Sorry, go ahead. No, he, he he saw this clip in his uh, in his files and said, "Well, the world needs this. I can't be selfish and hold it all to myself." This is eight seconds long. Here we go, and you're gonna see um, people walking right by him in front of the stage. Just so t hi, just late white people. Just come on, it's just it's like a bri bridal party coming in. So. I love when he points out people's race. It gets me every time. He's so funny. Late white people. That's not usually who's late, right, Dad? <laughs> no, he, right. If he would have said these white women are on CPT, that would have been funny. <laughs> but he didn't say that. He just goes, oh, look at late white people. And he put that out as a crowd work clip that you're like, see how funny this guy is? Whoa. That, no now stopping I'm... him. Uh-oh, you just, you just cut out on me. Oh, am I back? Yep, you're back now. I was saying I get Matt Reif's popularity now because if you're scrolling through TikTok and that's the level of crowd work where it's like, hey, white people, then Matt Reif's hilarious, actually. I didn't realize. See, I would have said, ladies, you're not late enough. Dat fan is still on stage. <laughs> <laughs> you fucked up. <laughs> the show is still going. Ladies, uh, maybe grab yourselves a drink. Kill, kill about 20 minutes. 
<laughs> All right. This is another dad fan clip from uh, TikTok. Oh, well, can I set this one up too? Please. Just because I, the reason I sent it is because the last time we played that fan, we heard a lot about his big tour. Mm-hmm. Um, when I saw him in Haver de Grace, he was on day 48 of a 60 day tour. Right. And we talked about how he drove from California to Florida to Maryland. He was traversing the nation. And I didn't realize how arduous this 60 days were, were and now just jam-packed with work they were. Yeah. Well, we're going to find out here. This is Dad Pan in Dallas, Texas, and uh, at Farmer's Branch Firehouse Theater. We have a couple shows. We have one tonight, Friday, and one tomorrow, Saturday night. They're both getting pretty packed. So I found out on the tour that a lot of people get tickets at the last minute, which is fine. And hopefully you can get them before they're sold out. This is our... I hope well, that, people can get that's them before they sell out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We that were all in shame. our seats. There were about 200 empty seats in the Haver de Grace Opera House. But people outside were banging on the door. Please! We're yep. one minute late! Come on! Yep. Can't you cut us a break? Sorry. You should have got your tickets sooner. <laughs> you done messed up. When they're sold out. This is our last stop. Is the 8th out of 8th city as far as the tour. And I have a, pro- a couple of private shows. Oh. Hold on a second. Oh. <laughs> eight cities is barely a tour. I wouldn't call that a tour. You're saying he had eight cities in 60 days, Mike? It's not a tour, Carl. He had plenty of time to stop home. <laughs> <laughs> what's, he, what's he doing? It's crazy. <laughs> so, yeah, basically, he's a comedian who once a week does a show. <laughs> right. Yeah, most comics don't call this a tour. <laughs> this is just what their job is. Right. D- different cities at different weekends, but New Mexico and also Arizona after this. But anyways, shout out to Shelly Quiet. Also shout out to Katie's family members that are coming to the show. And also uh shout out to Yuen Huang who's coming to the show. We have a lot of mutual friends in common and all that stuff. So we look forward to seeing all of you what? in person. Katie's doing the Friday night show what as well. What? And uh <laughs> working with Dave James about? Parsons, Al Caselia, many other comedians on the lineup. We look forward to it. We'll see you guys soon. You see, you oh, see all the scan the QR guys, code. Like you get the Andrew tickets. Schultz and Chris Stefano, like these guys that are big on social media. You always see them telling you who's going to be in the audience at their show. Like <laughs> De Stefano played fucking uh, the theater at Madison Square Garden, and he's like, "Yeah, fucking Jim Robinson's going to be there, and Tony Dorsett." Well, that's a fucking never mind. I can't improv, but. Uh, but random names. Rachel will be there, I think. <laughs> Timothy's coming. I'm very excited yeah. to see him. It's been a minute. That'll be exciting. Dude, I have to tell you, it must be exhausting to pretend that you're successful at stand-up comedy. Yeah. Like Dad Fan has been doing for a couple of decades now. I love that you're going after him. He's a fraud. It's it's crazy. I had no idea. I assumed he just like disappeared and did his gigs when he did them. He's a complete phony who has convinced himself and has yeah. tried convincing everyone he's talking to that he's not only successful, but he's figured out the way to do it. Like he's doing it better than everyone else. Well, and I listened to your uh, Why You Laughing episode about him where he was talking about when he was on Last Comic Standing, he won season one. Yep. And he was talking about how he's writing down in his notebook yes. equations and charts and graphs about how much laughter there's going to be for what percentage of time that he's doing. It's like, you're looking at this all wrong, idiot. And he still is. He's still doing this all wrong. Yeah, he's gone from that. We talked about it in the episode, but he's gone from that notebook to now he uses like Kung Fu tactics and it's like, I don't know, dad, do you think that's what fucking Richard Pryor was doing? Do you think it's really necessary? It's really bad. All right, let's move on. We're still on TikTok, but Dylan from somewhere sent me this. This is a new thing that the young people are suffering from. And I want to bring it to light because there's a lot of discrimination out there. That's why people don't understand these kinds of things. And this is a, a concept called time blindness. Now, Mike, you have this thing called um, sight blindness. Yeah, we like to think of it as the original blindness. Yeah, we're right. open to uh, offsets. Okay, good. I'm glad, I'm glad you're open to it. Let's find out what this is. So I just got yelled at for asking a very reasonable question. So I'm applying to go somewhere, and I just wanted to know, are there accommodations for people who struggle with time blindness and being on time? You know. <laughs> and then the person I was with interrupted and acted like i was asking something else and then when we were done they actually started yelling at me and saying that accommodations for time blindness doesn't exist and if you struggle with being on time you'll never be able to get a job 
you know, provided you're trying your absolute best to be there. <laughs> and then they're like, your stupid generation wants to destroy the workplace. And yeah, I think that a culture where workers are just cut off because they struggle with being on time, when there's other solutions that we can look to, I think that just anybody who thinks it's okay to just treat people like that, yeah, that culture needs to be dismantled. Damn and straight. then I ask that person, how can you feel good about yourself upholding this kind of system? And then to think, I'm entitled. No, if people think it's okay to treat others like this, I, that's entitlement. Hell right. yeah. Sing it, sister. I get so annoyed when people waste my time when they're late for things. I get so frustrated by that. And I love, it's amazing to me that being shitty in life is now a disorder. And everyone else has to deal, has to deal with your disorder now because you suck at life. Um, ableist much? You hear this guy, folks? Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. It's amazing to me. <laughs> what I love is the image of someone like strolling into work and getting berated for being a half hour late and they point at their iced coffee. They're like, don't you see I have a disability? What are you, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, <laughs> I'm disabled. Could I you can't imagine be on time. being in a job interview and saying, just so you know, I will never show up on time. I, it's just impossible for me to do that. Like, okay, because what happens is people come in for dinner around six. And I'm going to need you here serving tables at six. If you're not here, that's going to be a problem. Like, whoa, so I can't work here now. I see what's going on here. Um, you'll be hearing from my lawyer. <laughs> but you know what? You know what, though? If you want a, a blind prediction here. Okay. I think this might be one that gets some sort of traction. Not that it, of I course think the, it gen will. the general of course public it will, will know it's bullshit, but there will be some accommodations for time blindness or whatever the fuck thing. They won't call it blindness. We won't allow that, but they'll call it something. Um, so I want to thank Flex316 for becoming a new YouTube member. Thank you very much, Flex. And then back to some super chats. Yay, super chats. Dave Delafior, Carl, just heard you might need your cats fed. You don't own. Love the show. Yes. Thank you very much, Dave. Those cats I don't own definitely need someone to come and care for them. Christina Marie became a new member. Thank you very much, Christina Marie. Turbo 1227. He's five bucks. Says Christian, Carl would open the books, but it would never be enough. <laughs> Drunk on Cringe. I just bought uh, some clothing from drunkoncringe.com. Oh. I think that uh, I got a notice of that shipped out. I'm excited about that. Five euros. Install lots of hidden cameras in your FLO home. Plant stuff like hard drives, boxes, porn stashes. Get a cat. Ask John to take care of it for a week. I see what you're doing there. The great culmination of this sitcom of you and John living in Florida is if you show up one weekend, <laughs> me, John, and Richard are getting trashed there. We're throwing a party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <You're> like, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. The square's home. <laughs> right. I, I'd have to be the, the parental figure in all of this. <laughs> be like, guys, I got to give a podcast tomorrow, okay? You can't keep me up all night blaring your music again. John's playing guitar in the living room. You guys are all singing along. It's if... <sighs> If it happened any differently, I just wouldn't believe you that you got it's too sitcommy. Oh yeah, someone was saying that yesterday. It might have been producer Chris. We were over here doing WATP, and he goes, "If this was a TV show, and in season three or season four, you and John became neighbors, I'd be like, okay, they're getting lazy now." Yes, <laughs> the writing is getting yes, very that's what lazy. I was trying to say. Better way of putting it. Chris. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, it's it's insane. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, we're obviously in a simulation. <laughs> Nothing's real, people. Especially not your money, so you might as well give it as a super chat. Get your jokes right. I come buckets, two bucks. Craig's joke was thumbs up. His name describes his audience. Craig's joke. His name describes his audience. I don't know. You're saying Craig's joke, and I'm drawing a blank. Yeah, I right. Both, both Mike and I are just like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what you mean, sir. You have the right show, Craig. Who? <laughs> uh, Cmos forty forty four with five euros. Another who are these? You laughed when I said you should go daily, but you basically are, are now. Uh, you are now you podcasting mania. Yeah, I can't do this daily, sir. This is that's. Will you be much. on? Uh, who are these broadcasts regularly? Are you his co-host or is it just I don't, Christian? I'm going to be on tomorrow. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> that's all, all right. That's all I'll say about that. I'll be on the all show right. tomorrow. 
Buffalo Day, five bucks. Carl Hamburger is the one and only true pod father. Pod power, pure pod power, pod superiority, pod blood, pure pod blood. Buffalo Dave. Uh, sorry about your brother. That cool. sucks. He's He's got, um, I think, Vinny's picture as his avatar there. And then Peter Cooper with two pounds. Buy a little something for your cat. Scola! Scola <laughs> to you, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. This is the thing that we've all been waiting for. I fucked your mom. You're done. You're done. Uppercut. Chicken and crackers. Wind it up. I'm going to need you to put the ranch down. I always like when Balin reacts to questions she gets. Yes. Or comments that she receives. And so this is an example of that. The question here so, is, there is something wrong with you. Okay, it's not a question. <laughs> I take that back. <laughs> More of an attack, but... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there is something wrong with you. And this is her response to that. I personally don't really like wieners. I personally don't think there's anything wrong with me. However, ah, if, 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 wind it up. I do have... A condition called shut the fuck up, bitch. Oof. <laughs> fuck you in sign language. <laughs> it's called Tourette syndrome. Let's go through a lesson. Tourette syndrome is a neurological involuntary chronic motor and vocal disorder. What is that? Um Yes, you can take further information to the to Google, um, but I don't pers- I don't think there's something wrong with me other than <laughs> little wieners. Everyone's got a fucking wiener. Now, Mike, by definition, there's something wrong with her, right? If she has <laughs> Tourette's syndrome, like the the word syndrome should be no. a clue there, right? Nothing about that video makes me think there's anything wrong with her. She seems like a perfectly normal <laughs> girl. Literally something wrong with you. All right, she, go, she goes on to explain further. USA, USA, USA. <laughs> um, but yes, I just have Tourette's. It's hereditary. I cannot help it. And I can't help fucking your mom, though. Nice. <laughs> well done. Well played. It's how big your wiener is. Little baby wiener is. So. I hate to do this every time, but those can't be Tourette's. They're too perfectly timed. She's obsessed with penis size, this woman, I have to say. All right. So I I looked this up. She said it was hereditary. And I found the actual cause of Tourette's is a thing called bitch needs attention disorder. Ah, okay. So that's actually what causes this. That does sound very medical, yes. (laughs) Which which makes a lot of sense. (laughs) How bizarre is that? Here's a woman who's famous for being a wackadoo, probably faking it, but either way, you know, at this point, whether she's faking it or it's real, it's still crazy. She's committed to it. Right. Which is much crazy. If you see a person with Tourette's, it's like, ah, that kind of sucks, but they've made yeah. the most of it. This is a person who has dedicated their life to probably a lie, which is more impressive. Adam Curry has Tourette's. I love Adam Curry. He's on the No Agenda show. He was on Joe Rogan a few yeah. times. The first time he was on there, he said, just so you know, I have Tourette's, so I'm going to tick and I'm going to do some things. And I, I try not to do it, but just ignore it as it happens. Yep. And that's what people with Tourette's do. They say, I don't want this to be happening. It sucks. I'm going to try not to, but it's going to happen. It's involuntary. Yeah. Balin gets on and wants to talk about how tidy your wiener is, <laughs> and she wants to wind it up at USA, USA. I don't think yeah. that she's trying to fight this at all. No, but you're leaving out the part where Adam Curry said to Rogan, I'm going to enjoy fucking your mom. That was part of it. And I think <laughs> yeah. that was the Tourette's. Well, when he, when he yelled at Joe, he said, put the ranch down. And Joe goes, there's no ranch in here, sir. I don't know what you're talking about. I've never eaten ranch dressing in my life. That was a fun exchange they had. One thing, though, and I agree with you. I like when she's battling comments. But after last yeah. week's episode, you know, I go back and I, I do my research, of course, and I got a little sure. closer to the old screen in that video. I think you guys should be insulting, you know, the, the shape of her tits and stuff like yes. that more. That seems more beneficial to the audience. Speaking of her tits, I found an amazing video. This video has oh, been taken right. down five times, according to Balin. And uh, there's some interesting information we're going to find out here. Okay. Okay, it's currently three o'clock. Fuck you. 
Pack your goodie bags and micro penises and get out. John 3, 12, scumbag. I woke up at 12.30. Okay? I need to share my motherfucking wiener. I need to share my dream with you guys. Okay. Fuck you. Starting off. You have a little baby wiener. Oof. Oof. USA. 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 <laughs> I went to get a piercing in my nose. My little wiener. Fuck off. Um, and I left with 21 piercings. 21. Sure, mask. Okay. I had my nipples pierced. I had a wire through, like, this little little lane. Fuck you, cunt. <laughs> Wind it up! Whoa. <laughs> okay. I, I mean, I had everything pierced. I had every toe pierced. Okay. okay. Fuck you. I come back to my boyfriend. My boyfriend's like, this is a lot for me to handle. We can't date anymore. So I call my mom and I'm like, fuck you, scumbag. Get the fuck over here, you stupid fucking bitch. All right, so are you following this story so far? I she think so, to, yeah. She went to go get a nose ring. And I don't know if they convinced her or she just decided this is really fun. <laughs> she got everything pierced. Yeah. Including they, the nipples. They, they use the old, uh, oh, you want one ring. How about 47? Does that right. work for you? Right, yeah. It's a negotiating tactic. She's like, yeah. that's way too many. Like, all right, how about 21? Like, that makes more Deal. sense. <laughs> that makes a lot more sense. Now, I don't know who her boyfriend is. I haven't met this guy. Lucky but I can't imagine my girlfriend, who's got these ridiculous D cups, coming home one day and saying, "I just got my nipple pierced," and me saying, "Gross!" Ew! Get out of here! Get out of here. get out of here with that! Cover I want off. nothing to do with that. All right, now this is where it gets crazy, Mike. So so far we're going. All right, fun story. This is where it gets nuts. Okay. No, I was like, Mom, like you need to come over here and help me take out all my piercings. Fuck you. So she comes over and helps me remove all my piercings and she comes in the door and she's like, maybe we should start with your nipples because they'll probably hurt the most. You following this, Mike? You still with me, buddy? Gonna... <laughs> what are they going to do to them? What are you doing to the nipples? <laughs> she has her mom helping her remove her <laughs> nipple rings. I've never heard of such a thing. I don't know if this is a category on Pornhub. Maybe it is. Do you need, is this a two man job? You can't do it yourself? <laughs> well, I don't know if you know this, Mike, but um, she has a hard time with oh, that's, delicate that's, motions. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. That. She's like, let me just get this uh, clit ring out. Wow, fuck. There, there goes my nipple. <laughs> <laughs> Let it go in. Guys, fuck you. This is my dream. Okay. I've had a lot of fucking crazy wieners in my life. I've had a lot of <laughs> little baby wieners, but this one got nothing on me. Um, that's a new one, but oh, give me a second. I need a drink of water. Don't worry guys. Just try to get my water intake for the day. <laughs> this thing's as big as me. Ooh, get it, get it, get it. This is as big as your little wiener. I little baby wiener. Uh, yeah. Tippy tippy tap that wiener tap there to spree chicken. So mom comes over, helps me remove all my piercings. And then I turn out, I sneak out of, I sneak out. To go get a dog. The dog is purple and it has one eye. Um, <laughs> What's going on? Y'all. Fuck you. That is my dream. Um, I had a dream Martin Luther King Jr. <laughs> um, Very specific yes. pick. <laughs> yes, I have a lot of crazy dreams. My mom told me that I should probably cut back on my, <laughs> probably cut back on my, my sleep pills. I need them. Fuck you. Now, Mike, this is, don't take any offense to this, please. Okay. I love doing a show with you. I think you're a great co-host on sure. WATS. Go ahead. I, I would do anything to co-host mm. a show with Baylor Dupree. She's, <laughs> she's the world's greatest broadcaster. you have enough shows, God damn it. <laughs> I, I would drop all my other shows for Carl and Baylor because she's the world's greatest broadcaster of all time. I, I can't even imagine. Well, this is where... I think the trajectory the two of you are on is pretty clear. Where Carl is getting mm -hmm. famous in the podcasting world now. Sure. Balin's obviously a rising star who yep. has her share of problems. So I think Carl one weekend goes on a bender, hooks up with Balin. It's a tumultuous relationship. It's all heading there, obviously. I think that's the path you're clearly on. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I paid him to say that. Turbo 1227 <laughs> coming in with uh, $2. Yay! Super chats. That fan, that fan, only one there, you dolts. 
damn straight. Yeah, that is interesting that his name is Dat Fan. You know, Dat Fan. Oh, he has a be. joke about it, believe me. Oh, of course he does. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Nimrob71 with five bucks. Some people say that Balin Dupree segment isn't awesome. Well, those people can wear Chad Zumok's jockstrap as a CPAP mask. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be stealing mm. that. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. And then Anthony with two bucks said, uh, Munchenhausen by internet, LOL. Yes. There's you M- Munchausen. You can leave any time. Munchausen. Yeah. I've used that word before, but I don't know how to pronounce it right now for some reason. I think reason. it's Munchausen. Munchausen makes more sense. Okay. Now, this one came in from Paul E. Ogre, and he says, I think this is more fake than the Tourette's girl, or it's more fucked up. Okay. There's this woman on Facebook. She does these Facebook reels. Her and her husband or boyfriend or something. And she has this gag reflex and her boyfriend gets her to like gag very easily. Sure. Here's an example. I guess she's grossed out by babies. So there's a baby <laughs> with her in the kitchen. <laughs> and this is how she reacts to it. <laughs> Look at it, Lord. No, I can't. <laughs> You can't, you can't help but look at it, though. Why not? Listen, no more. Listen, I just came to court my smile. Don't you even stop. Every time she looks over at the baby, she starts gagging. Okay, I'll tell you what I think this is. Okay. I think it's similar to what we were talking about with Balin Dupree, where it's technically fake. I don't think this person has a condition where they th- vomit when they see children. But... I think they've convinced their family that they do on some level where it's like their thing that they have to keep up now. And it's like, oh, look, there's a baby in the room. Don't tell Allison or whatever the fuck, you know? Her name's Laura, and I will tell you this, Mike. (laughs) It's not just babies, though. All he has to do is do the throw-up sound to her, and then it it causes her to get the gag reflex going. And every video on her page... You scroll and scroll and scroll. It's just this guy going, look, look. And she's like, what? Here's an example of that. Lauren. What do you mean? What am I got? What am I What's the matter? Oh, God. You afraid somebody's going to walk in? One more for the children? Yeah, one more. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, we'll All right, get out. It reminds me of Richard Christie on the Howard Stern <laughs> show. This girl learned real quick how J.J. Walker felt when he walked into a room. Like, hey, say dynamite. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, uh, yes, no, I throw up when I see babies. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, I'm sick. You know the Jimmy Walker? Because he's he comes to the comedy club here in town from time to time. He's still doing oh, the comedy thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He will not say, because Vinny interviewed him on his show. Yeah. He will not say dynamite. You could not get him to say dynamite. Now, I think he did for like a Geico commercial or something. Yeah. I guess yeah, if the yeah. price is right, he'll do it. Right. But yeah, he's fine. <laughs> Vinny's to, like, boy, uh... this interview has been explosive, wouldn't you say? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> what would be louder than this interview right now? What do you think? <laughs> uh, he's not that clever. <laughs> Vinny Paulino, he wouldn't have thought of that. All right. Let's head over to Instagram for one of our favorites. All these. Who are these Instagrammers? Now, we've talked about John Sarasani and uh, Sarasani? Sarasani. I was right the first time? Yeah. Damn it! (laughs) (laughs) This this is the guy who quit his sales job where he was making $200,000, $300,000 a year. Like a bitch. Yeah, like an idiot. Started up his own business, sold it, and now is just... The wealthiest guy you'll ever meet. And what's nice, too, is that he's humble about it. He, doesn't he like certainly is, yeah. He rub it in your face much. or anything like that. So this video is insane. And and Mike finds these videos. I, I can't believe this guy does this. He's goofing on the other people who are at the country club that he's at. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is him just uh, calling them out for their ridiculousness. All right, here's my impression of country club people. Now, mind you, most of these people are like upper middle class in the area, like 300, 400 grand kind of year guys. But, you know, here, here, here's the fucking conversations. Hey, hey Jacko, dude, I'm going to introduce you to Corey. 
dude, dude, hey, between me and you, he's worth two billion with a B. Two billion with a B. With a B. B, B, B. Okay, okay, buddy. Hey, 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 Jim. Jim, did you get that new Ferrari, bro? How'd your wife let you do that? You didn't tell her, did Dude, he didn't fucking tell his wife. Oh my god, these two, dude. You should see them after a few more. I know you didn't tell her, bro. I. This is really like when you. Eddie Murphy played hey, hey, nine hey, characters hey. in The Nutty Professor. It's like which right? He's doing all of this. Yeah, he's he's just going in and out, and it's seamless. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. We're in this cannabis deal. I didn't fucking tell you about this. Do not fucking say I told you. We got two thousand fucking acres out in fucking Wyoming. I can't let you in on it. It's closed. I'm under an NDA. That's all I'm saying. Just. Shh. 2,000 acres, though, Laura. What's crazy is he doesn't realize he comes off way douchier than any of the people he's mocking right now. Way douchier. And also, we don't know the people he's talking about. Right. So it's like, Carl, you got to see this impression of my uncle. Hey, get out of here. That was spot on. Oh, <laughs> damn. That's what he sounds like. That was a good impression, Mike. <laughs> wow. Spot on. But he's literally making fun of people who are him. This is what he does. Yeah. He goes on and talks about being rich and oh, I got these deals going. I'm I'm killing it. That'd be like if I was on here and I go, Mike, I'm watching YouTube and the host is like, your podcast stinks. You don't have any skills. <laughs> I, I couldn't idiot, believe it. Right? What a fucking <laughs> douchebag this guy is calling people out for having shitty podcasts. I think this uh, this video screamed out to me when I saw it too because it reminded me of something I've noticed Stuttering John doing lately. And he did, I think specifically about you where he's like, Hey guys, watch my Carl impression. Ooh, I'm a little girl. I'm Carl. I drink like a lady. It's like these are not impressions. This is not a character no, you're doing. No. <laughs> you're just calling me out for things that you think I do that are stupid. Yeah, in a it's silly impression. Voice. I know. John's doing this new thing now. So he makes fun of the way I drink beer while I'm doing yeah, my yeah. podcast. Not gay. But, <laughs> right. Not gay. Just effeminate. But he does this thing, and I've never done this before. But he, he says, I, I take a sip and I go, yeah. <laughs> like, I've, I've never done that. I don't even know where that came from, but okay. Uh, good stuff. You know who does the that? Cocksuckers like you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get more from, uh, from John. He's got family in from out of town and he wants, <laughs> yeah, what do you think? You call this one family time. Yeah. <laughs> so we got family prison in for us in Los Angeles. All right. My aunt and my uncle, my cousins, their husband, their fiance, my son's here. This is my daughter, Anastasia. Hey, let's try new shit with our family. Let's do things we haven't done each before. Let's level up, all right? So maybe we'll go to the Griffith Observatory. Maybe we'll go to this museum. No. You know what we're going to do today? We're going to go to Hamburger Mary's in West Hollywood and watch a fucking drag show. Was it your first drag show, Stasia? Yes. Mine too. We experienced our first drag show together. And here's what I found out about myself. I prefer the drag queens that are like 6'6", six, six, 350 pounds. I was rock hard. <laughs> here's, what, here's what I learned about myself. I ejaculated in my pants. I, I think I'm a closeted homosexual. That's what I learned about myself. 350 pounds. I think they're entertaining. When the littler ones come out there, I, I'm not going to boo. I'm going to be polite. They're not as entertaining, though. All right? He was literally rooting them on. Exactly. Well, it is true. Don't, don't give in to this, sweetheart. Hold on a second. John Sarasan. <laughs> Johnny is a person just like me? I had no idea. <laughs> what is he putting his pants on one leg at a time too? Holy shit. This is all news to me. That's it real is true. Listen, not something I ever would have done before. Here I am in my 40s, laughing my fucking face off, having a blast with my fucking family. Stay young, motherfuckers. Stay young. Because <laughs> you know the message there is just like, isn't this quaint? I'm yeah. just hanging out with normal people with my family. Isn't that a, a fun goof that I was doing? <laughs> Also, stay young like me, who's going out with his grown children. <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? You're babysitting for the day. What do you mean, stay young? This asshole, he, if he wants to give me advice on how to make money, I get that. He has a lot more money than I do. Sure. But he's going to give me advice on how to have fun? <laughs> fuck you, motherfucker. You listen to me about how to have fun, all right? I got that in spades. Dare it's you. also like he's telling us how to live, and he's like, you know what we did? Went and pointed and laughed at men in ladies' clothing. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Ooh. Well, fish pie. Super, super chat. Super chat now. Kyle's gonna read a super chat. Ooh. Super, super chat. Oh, come on now. Mike would do it, but he can't. Hey! Woo! Oh, yeah. I come buckets. 
th- someone's got to put together a compilation of just me yelling I come buckets over and over again because <laughs> it's all I seem to do on this show anymore. Can I pierce her holy of holies and her throat? <laughs> okay, well that's well, that's not nice. <laughs> that's not nice at all. Uh, Lee Kinnis. He says, "Thith guy hath a tweeth lisp." There's a little bit of a a little bit of a speech impediment. <laughs> a little bit. He, Brando, he confronts a lot of his commenters on that one. <laughs> Brando the Commando. Did you two meet on the bleachers in gym class? I don't know who that's referring to. I hope I it's not I us. That. I hope he's not referring to us just now. <laughs> All right, let's get back to John. He's got uh, an important note for us here. All right, just tried to buy a thousand dollars of steak for the police, and uh, I fucked it up, guys. I'm sorry. I have a bunch of American Wagyu, some USDA Prime, some fucking tomahawks, some good ass motherfucking shit. All right. Uh, I tried to like factor in taxes. I'll be right around a thousand, a little higher. Well, I didn't fucking know in LA. Apparently, they don't charge tax, guys, on fucking steaks. Did anyone else fucking know that they don't charge taxes on steak? At least they don't in Beverly Hills. Who cares? So, anyway, it's only $934, guys. I wasn't going to go run back. I, I thought it would be over 1000 with tax, and it said 934 So, I owe you guys 66 bucks when I deliver these tomorrow. Got you some good fucking shit, though. Got you some really good fucking shit. You know, Mike, I don't think this is about tax on steak at all, if I had to guess. <laughs> I think you might be right, Carl. <laughs> where he's trying to, to, like, hey, guys... I enjoy good savings as much as the next guy. Isn't this pretty sweet? No taxes on these steaks. He's bragging. That's the weird thing is like he he gets so in depth with this money talk. And then he's like, I mean, $66, guys. Sorry about that. He's I want to I wanted to get a thousand dollars with the steak for the, the cops, but it was actually only 934. It's like, yeah, OK, that's fine. I'm yeah, sure the police no, that, will be happy with that. It's all good. We weren't looking to get like oh he's just at the the weighing mach- the scale, taking some on, putting it back off. <laughs> it has to be exactly a thousand dollars worth. Wait, wait till you see my next video. It's gonna be like, hey guys, did you know that once you make enough money on YouTube, they no longer offer direct deposit? I, I thought, you know, my six figure deposits would just come right into my account, but that's just not the case. It doesn't work that way. I guess I just have like too many subscribers. Yeah. I'm you should probably leave. I'm just, I just want to, I just want to warn you guys in case, you know, you get to my level. This is what it goes on on YouTube. It's like, no, this isn't about that at all. Is it Carl? You just wanted to brag. <laughs> this guy's a, f- I, I'm seeing right through this guy. I think, I think ah, I see geez, what he's up to. Pain in the ass. I'm in like the highest tax bracket. It's so annoying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking idiot. <laughs> And I, I doubt that they don't tax just steak. It's probably food. It's probably, <laughs> you know what I mean? No, 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 no. Your fruits and vegetables, those are taxed. Your yep. other meats, those are all taxed. <laughs> steak in Beverly Hills, as he said, is not taxed. Fucking idiot. I, this last clip here is insane to me. I have a lot to say about this one. Okay. So get an interesting call last week from somebody who says, dude, stop posting this shit on social media. They're all laughing at you. Who? And it was people that we all used to be friends with. <laughs> I go, where, where Where are they laughing at me? And it was a Thursday afternoon. Where, where are they They're laughing homes? at me? What do you mean, John? Where are they laughing? No, no, where physically are they at? They're on a group text thread with their company issued cell phone that they have to put $50 for on their expense report, right? And they're sitting at their desks at work using the messenger at their work making fun of me, right? Right? Yeah. That's where they're laughing at me at. They're W-2 fucking employees. Of course, of course they're laughing at somebody that's retired, someone that's a multimillionaire, someone that's going on a fucking boat while they're requesting PTO. Now, first off, I want to point out, we're also laughing at you. It's not just your buddies at your old job. Carl and Mike, I want some credit here. We're laughing at you too, asshole. Come and on. We're also, we're not laughing at someone who's retired, but it's close. It's a similar word. I'm not sure. <laughs> no. You can both have a lot of money and be wildly mockable. I'm pretty sure half of this country has been mocking Trump for the last seven years. <laughs> and Trump's doing much better than this asshole. And he's going, oh, you guys are laughing at me? Why? Because I put out douchey videos that are easily mockable? Is that why you're laughing at me? Yes, that is why, sir. That's correct. I, also, I looked at it from like the opposite angle where he's like, where? From what cell phone? The company yeah. phone that they have? And I'm like... 
I don't make much money, but I have my own phone. I can still make fun of you on. What the fuck are you talking about? I, I know. He's, he's trying to get over on them by saying, like, oh, are they putting that in the messaging app they use at work? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Where, wherever they see you being a douchebag, that's where what, they say it. <laughs> what difference does that make? I know you think that's a brag, but. It's, it's hilarious, too, because it's like my pal Richard Ojeda was trying to instill this in John, where he's like, John, these people are just trolling you. They don't know you. Whereas right. in John Sirisani's case, it's like, Phew. well, who's making fun of me? And the guy responds, you know, people we used to be good friends with. <laughs> right, yeah, that's oh, actually hilarious. Oh, so it's just your loved ones. I, I, that's no big deal. <laughs> oh, just friends and family? All right, cool. <laughs> well, I'll get back at them. I'll do a video talking about how I'm cooler than them. They got no, owned. that's why they're laughing at you, John. That's why they're laughing at you. What's wrong with you, you idiots? His biggest burn is that, like, to, to all his critics, is like, you guys have jobs. It's like, oh, yeah. I guess you got me there. Oh, you guys are making what? A quarter of a million dollars a year at your job? <laughs> oh, have fun with that, idiots. Okay. Got us. <sighs> Very good. Somebody wrote in the uh, chat over here that uh, apparently in California, there's no tax on steak or caviar. So, for whatever wow, reason, that is lucky for guys like Sears <laughs> yeah, I can't that's... believe that kind of luck. It makes a lot of sense that they would do it that Champagne way. Champagne also, it seems, untapped. <laughs> right, yes. Make, makes sense. All right. Um, let's see what's going on. Flux 316 with two Australian dollars. Super chat for Tiff. And I come buckets with two bucks. I want to give two dollars, but YouTube taxes it, so it's only a dollar forty. Well, you know, you can always give more than two dollars. <laughs> it does work like that. You owe me 60 cents, I come buckets. <laughs> That's how that works. All right, He's this one, this one also on Instagram. This one came in from Hack Ride. Yeah, this is well. You guys are going to get a little of what I deal with on a deal. Where Hack Ride just sends me messages, and literally, I said to him this one because it's a silly video, yep. and I said, uh, "Any context?" And this is the sort of attitude I get. He replies, "Do you really need context, Mike?" Um, you do a so show called Who Are These Socials? How about that for context? Jesus. And I was like, all right, I'll send it to Carl, boss, whatever you say. <laughs> all right, well, let's see. Let's see if we need context for this. Mommy, I just went poo-poo. <laughs> Does mommy want to change my poopy diaper? <laughs> Does daddy want to sniff my farts? <laughs> <clears throat> Now, Harry, my question that's it. is this. <laughs> now let's yeah, be that, funny. <laughs> that's the video that Hack Ride sent over that we had to play on who are these socials. Now, I understand that people want to, or have to, not want to, but have to change poopy diapers. Yes. But do fathers smell farts? I didn't know that was a thing as well. <laughs> well, Carl, I could answer that if I knew more context about the video, but unfortunately, Correct. I don't have that capability. That's the problem. All right, let's get off Instagram. I want to go over to Twitter. Look at this tweet now. All right, and we're going to start off with uh, Alex Bennett. She is one half of Mean Girl. Yes. The Barstool Sports podcast that we've talked about on yeah. WTP, and I think we've talked about it on here before as well. Yeah. We made some news. So what I was going to say, I think the only other time we talked about them was because of that whole Kelly Keegs thing, where yeah. Kelly Keegs, who also works for Barstool, basically wrote a blog saying, these girls are pretending to be dumb. Like they're saying that uh, I forget what the, they didn't know. Dinosaurs were real. They didn't know people right. washed their hands after they went to the bathroom. And Kelly Keys was like, no, I've met them. They're smarter than this. They're pretending to be dumb. And that broke these girls brains. Cause they left yes. the office. They stopped doing the podcast in the office. They made like a really serious response to it. Mm -hmm. It was very weird. And since then things have gotten weirder for them where they don't know what their personalities are anymore. Oh no. <laughs> and that's hilarious. Alex Bennett, who I like more of the two, she seems a little more in on the joke, but I don't think that's the case here because she's talking about her marriage, apparently. Okay, let's see what she's saying. Graham and I are going through it right now. I think we could have guessed that. You guys are like, he's not in your videos. Guys, I know. So the uh, question that's up here that she's responding to is Graham update. So... As yeah. she just said, her husband hasn't been in their videos lately. So people are like, what's going on with that? So this is her getting us caught up. I'm like, making the videos. <laughs> I had to say that part. We are afraid of 
I don't, I don't think in general you can be afraid of saying, hey, we're having a hard time, right? Entry level probably to being married. We no, 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 Alex, you don't owe us this. We're not in Kansas. Stop. Correct. <laughs> you don't owe us this explanation. Please, well, you're not getting a divorce yet. Don't tell us. Well, you can either give us an explanation or not. But this right. is neither of those things for whatever <laughs> yeah, reason. Point. I don't know what the point of this is. Being married. We are a long way. We're not in Kansas anymore. We've lived Oklahoma. We've lived LA. Now we live in New York. There's a lot. We've put ourselves out there in different positions. All by design, right? That's what we wanted to do. Now, I think there comes a point where you have to say, we could keep sweeping some things under the rug or you can look at those things and say, we have to address this. That's playing uh, short term. It's harder, more vulnerable. You're like, oh, like you're digging it up, right? Long term, I think that's a really beautiful thing. I think that's called playing offense, not defense. I've always thought about that in life in general. For? Probably a pretty good motto. Now, this isn't something I'm 100% just Alex Bennett. That's me, but I'm one half of me and Graham. So I, I want to keep this right now offline because we're in the middle. What do you think you're it. doing? Um, yeah, well, I, I'm. <laughs> confused at what the goal is here what's the objective what are you trying to accomplish <laughs> it's like if i said you if i sent you clips and, I, and you played the john sirasani clip and i was like carl i'd really like to leave my thoughts for that offline if you wouldn't mind yeah all right we'll talk we're about doing a show after, here and we'll you talk about it after the show yeah <laughs> so you guys i'm gonna tweet out after that don't read this tweet stop reading this tweet right now <laughs> this is for me personally i don't want anyone to see what i'm talking about here can keep commenting where's graham um, that's for me and Graham to know. And you Yes, have yes, it was. <laughs> right. Texting about. Okay. I love y'all. I do. I love y'all. Jesus. <laughs> this is where a lot of pod and I think in general, pod a lot, there's a lot of podcasts out there that are getting to this point where they've had a certain amount of success and they feel like they owe something to their audience because when they were a smaller podcast, they had maybe a tighter relationship or something. Sure. So now yeah. they're getting more comments like, hey, where's Graham or whatever? And you feel the need to explain it to them yet don't want to. So your mind is in a pretzel. Like, what the fuck do I do? And Alex Bennett is handling it pretty poorly. Well, this is my take on it. When I see a video like that, my thought is this is someone who loves internet rumors and speculation. Yeah. She wants to see Reddit going nuts. She wants to see all these people posting whatever they think's going on. And she's feeding it. This yeah. is her feeding that to keep it going for a while. She's like, well, I'm getting a lot of juice out of this. There's a lot of buzz going on about me and my husband. They haven't seen him around. Let me make a video that is so vague that all it will do is create more confusion. Right. Which is Smart. sad because if there is like real, real problems in her marriage, imagine being Graham and looking at this like, hey, what the fuck are you doing? Yes, we have legitimate problems. You're talking right. to them about it, not me. Also, the point that they moved to different cities over time, I don't know what that well, Carl, they're anything. not in Kansas anymore. Don't you understand? Right. It's a fun yeah. reference. It's good. Okay. All right. We're still on Twitter. And Diamond Harry submitted this. This world of paying TikTok girls to make video game noises is quite bizarre. We played a quick clip of this last week. I think everyone's been talking about this yeah. shit. But uh, I saw... It's more popular than I realized. <laughs> yeah, yeah, correct. That's the weird thing. Yeah. Hey, baby, I love you. Love you, love you, love you. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, baby. This is so cute. Jimani, wow. This is the most beautiful flowers I've ever seen in my life. Oh, grab. Oh, special. Gang, gang. Gang, gang. Gang, gang. Gang, gang. Yes, 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 yes. Gang, gang. Gang, gang. Gang, gang. So the tweet is posting this, but what the person is saying, Deja Rue 22, how much money is she making? She's holding 30,000 viewers strong doing this <laughs> yeah. type of video. It's popular. So more power to it. And this is what I've said about Kevin Brennan. I know he gets very angry when I say this, and I always preface it with, if Kevin's figured out a way to make money, good for him. Keep doing it. Don't stop if that's how you make your living. But this shit isn't content. Just reading shit people type on a screen and regurgitating it back to us is not a show. It's not well, anything. There's a comment underneath this. Somebody wrote, Steve Jobs rolling in his eye grave. <laughs> this is not what we planned for, for this. And I, I saw Trisha Paytas doing this shit too. 
I think yes. someone sent that to me, and I'm like, Trisha Paytas is doing this? This must be wildly profitable, because that woman's like a millionaire from social media, and she's jumping on board. He sent me that board. Dirty Harry, the guy that, or Diamond Harry, the guy that yeah. sent us this video. He sent me, uh, I think, one or two other examples of this. I figured we got it, but yeah. there's a bunch out there where it's just like, hey, put something on the screen, I'll read it, and you give me money. Apparently that's content now. But it's not just something on the screen, it's certain things over and over again. Right. I'm listen. I I don't understand. It's, I'm not going to pretend that I do. You know hey, what I'll I do? It. I'll be Yoshi for forty bucks if you want. Whatever. <laughs> you know what I do? Understand, need. Mike? I understand super chats. Yay, super chats! But then again, only sometimes on that front. <laughs> uh, Robert five bucks says I'd super more, but I went out on my boat and it sent me back thirteen bucks. Next week, guys. All right, no worries. All right, no problem. Thank you, thank you for that. And uh, Goat Melp for seven Canadian dollars. I live in Western Canada, and we were all taught in grade three that there was no tax on beef products in California. My neighbor <laughs> Cardiff says hi, by the way. <laughs> all right. It's a well-known every, thing, apparently. All right. Every Canadian learns that. <laughs> yeah, of course. That makes sense. All right. Let's head over to uh, YouTube. There's something I haven't gotten to yet that I've been meaning to. Who are these YouTube videos? Who are these YouTube videos? Oh. Our buddy King Cobra JFS. Yes. People send him stuff. Now, we've seen this before where people will deliver food for him, like really crappy pizza that sucks, the worst topics on it. People yeah. just fuck with him all the time. So... This is him getting glitter bombs in the mail. And I got to think, whoever's sending this um, is so excited about how this worked out. It's perfect. Um, okay. No new tobacco. But what I do have is a couple of packages to unbox. Just random shit. And I didn't order anything, so I guess we'll see. See what's in store. See what I got. And I got this tube right here. Watch so. out his knife. He's going to cut it open. <laughs> <laughs> what the went, fuck? <laughs> it just went everywhere. <laughs> wow. It was a tube full of glitter. <laughs> and I got it. It got me, man. I'll tell you what. <laughs> That's adorable. They sent me a tube of pink glitter. Aww. And when I opened it, it, it exploded all over me. Yep. <laughs> I saw it, buddy. Classic. <laughs> What's great is that he's saying it's cute. I bet he's full of rage right now. I, I was about, just about to say, you can tell he's furious. Yes. <laughs> oh, good one. <laughs> No, this isn't the uh, the first time that's happened to him. This one's even better. I can't think of a better scenario. If I were to have sent him this glitter bomb, the way he sets this up and the way this works out is perfect. Okay. Your boy Cobra also got this. Two cigars directly from Cuba. <gasps> what? It also came with a note. So let me just read it for you. <clears throat> Hi, Cobes. After I watched, ooh, I messed up. Let's try that again. Says, Hi, Cobes. After I vacationed, I went to Cuba for vacation with my of age woman. I don't know if you know this, but their cigars are famous. By them, you should show the trolls because they were quite expensive, and those pieces of shit will be jealous. Thanks for being you, Donovan. Donovan, my dude, thank you. My trolls are the biggest pieces of shit. You have no idea. I'm not going to discuss it because I'm not going to give those fucking assholes any more attention. Good. So this is a Commodore from uh, from Cuba. Nice. There's the official seal. Yeah. Republic of Cuba. Rub it in the troll's face. Let's break that fucking seal and open All it. All right. <laughs> Let's do it. This is exciting. Yeah. Fuck my asshole trolls. <laughs> Why would he Perfect. add that? Last a glitter word? bomb. <laughs> Perfect. Ha, you guys got me. <laughs> it's all over him. It's all over his eyes. And I'm getting all excited too. Like, yeah, I want to have some fucking badass bitch and cigars. Nope. Good one, you guys. Holy shit, I fell for that. 
here I am getting all excited, like, yeah, I got some Cuban cigars, man. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Well, like, put it all together. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Whoever put that all together, just perfect. I, I can't even imagine what their reaction was. They probably watched it 12 times in a row. When you're, it. when you're doing something like that, you think like, eh, it might not go perfectly, or he might not even yep. open it, or he's going to be on to me or whatever. Yeah. He went on such a rant. And then to add at the end, fuck my asshole. <laughs> so he's so confident. <laughs> yeah. Hey, watch this, trolls. And then boop. <laughs> ah, God damn it. <laughs> Oh, King Cobra. Uh, that's great stuff. Now, there's a guy named Chili DeCastro. Oh, yes. He has a YouTube channel called Delete Laws with a Z. He does. And he puts out some YouTube shorts that are just fan-fucking-tastic. Yeah. So we've seen advertisements for the Trifold before. Sure. But I wanted to include this one this week just because this one seems you're a marketing guy. <laughs> Yeah, this one might be more. I don't know if you usually use such aggressive tactics, but it seemed harsh to me. Now, the trifold, what he's saying you should do is when you drive around in your car, you need your license, registration and proof of insurance. Yes. You have to hand that over to the police officer. So he sells this project. You can shove those three things into this trifold that you can have it right next to you to easily hand over to the police officer. You're not shoving the pig's face. Right, you're not bending over and going through the glove compartment and trying to figure that out. And so uh, here is an advertisement for said product. If you got to reach down for something, bang! <laughs> bang, you're dead! You reached down! <laughs> hey, you reached! You think it's hyperbole? It's not hyperbole. You don't... <laughs> Sir, you're the one who brought up the word hyperbole just now. <laughs> I no, None of us said it. We were thinking it's it. <laughs> It's not hyperbole. You will die if you don't buy right. this. <laughs> it's not but, hyperbolic at all. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, why would he? Why would you be the one to bring that up? That it's hyperbole. Yeah. Reach oh, down. Your dad calls you a failure. Why as if. We, we <laughs> put these rubber bands in the package for you. This goes here. Your license, registration, proof, insurance goes here. This goes on up on your visor. It's there. Copper pulls you over. Hand goes up. Other hand comes up here, right by the window. Copper comes up, you reach up into your visor, you slip it out of the rubber band. You invoke your Fifth Amendment right, you're filming the copper. Touchdown position. Filming here, trifold here. Don't be reaching! Don't reach! This is up on your visor, rubber banded in. You got your license, registration, and proof of insurance here. It's all right there. It goes in a slip. Stop it all goes in a slip. Get my trifold on deletelaws.com. He's saving lives, Mike. I don't know why you're still upset with this guy. Even even in the biggest cases, like you know George Floyd and Michael Brown and all these stories that made national news, yeah. it was never. And the young black man reached into his glove compartment to get his registration. That's and because was viciously the, murdered. <laughs> that's because the news media isn't telling you the truth, Mike. That oh, they watch the you to think. <laughs> I can't wait till he starts selling food storage kits. When he's out here just going, AI is here. The robots are going to kill us. You need my Patriot supply. You are going to die without my Patriot supply. This is not hyperbole, people. Invest in gold. So why am I buying this instead of just like leaving it on the dashboard? I get like, yeah. what are you talking about? Why do I need it's, this product? It's not a great product. It really doesn't solve a lot of problems. Even if that were the case, that if reaching across your console would get you shot, there are other <laughs> solutions than buying his trifold, I have to say. It could be one of those fads, though, where it's meant to be a trifold, but then you see like, you know, all the kids in high school are wearing trifolds out of their pockets. You know, it's the cool thing. Well, I, I'm guessing they would last as long as uh, Criss Cross was doing the backwards jeans. <laughs> I don't think it would catch on for very long if anyone were to do it. What if they walk up to cops and yell, bam, look at my papers. <laughs> got him. I think that's got staying power. Delete Laws is a crazy person. He really is. He really is. I try not to send too many. I know we've done a lot of Delete Laws, but I keep an eye on him because he's, uh, he's waiting to explode. If only he had been a mighty morphine power ranger, he'd, he'd be in Hollywood <laughs> be a, right now. Be a totally different world. Be a totally different world for sure. Oh, wow. What are you going to do? All right, Mike, that's a lot of stuff that we covered today. It sure is. It sure is. 
And so now it's time to check out the voicemails. We have a voicemail that came in last week. We finally went to threads, the brand new social network from right. the unknown Mark Zuckerberg. Yes. This, this guy started the social media network. He sure did. And uh, we didn't have a jingle for threads. It's brand new. I'm not even on threads. I don't know what's going on over there. I guess right. Crystalia is complaining about his life. Yeah. I don't know. That's basically it. You got it. Okay, good. That's what I thought. <laughs> so this is a, uh, a voicemail or helping us out here. Hey, W-A-T-S. Here's a thread jingle for you. Pretty good. <laughs> Pretty good stuff. Did you do that yourself, sir? <laughs> that was very good. <laughs> Did you get help with that? Wow. <laughs> That's very impressive. I like it. Yep. And here I thought the jingles that we had were good. I'll stop the show and watch YouTube. That is bullshit compared to th 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 threads. <laughs> I think it's a good balance. I think. Uh oh. You cut out on us again. What was that? It doesn't matter. It was a dumb joke. All right, good. Well, then it worked out well for you. Your ISP saved you on that one, Mike. Good job. All right, last chance to get some super chats in if you want to communicate with us. Yay, super chats. Nimrob71. This is two bucks for tax-free steaks. I don't live in Beverly Hills, sir. So I'm willing to fly for a deal like that. I'll fly to California. Good, good point. Good point. Gina Bobina, what have we learned today? We learned that Chad Zumach is a hack. Well, I wasn't watching his show today, but I'm sure that's true. <laughs> I would believe that. I like all the people that have now, I'm particularly thinking of John, I guess, but I think Chad does it too, where it's like they're quoting Kevin Brennan saying hack. Yeah. And it's like they don't see the irony in that. That's what's amazing about it. <laughs> it's wild. That's what that's what's amazing about it. It's <laughs> it's really come full circle. And I should probably promote while we're on here, we got some people watching the show. Check out this very channel, the Who Are These Podcasts. It's at Carl W A T P. Oh, I should yes. probably know that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. YouTube.com slash at Carl W A T P. And um I'm gonna be talking to Stuttering John Wednesday at six PM. Eastern time. That's the 26th of July. It is going to be a debate. I'm not going to let John shout over me. We're going to have a discussion. We're going to get through important things that we need to discuss him and I, because we have a sorted past the two of us. Very exciting. So, yeah. Tune in for that. Come in. I will read super chats. You guys can ask your questions to John. There's a lot to uh, unpack with him. So I'm looking forward to that very much. And uh, that's what I'm up to. But Mike, what are you up to? Are you guys doing a blind Mike project tomorrow? Well, if you guys think that uh, Carl and John fighting is good, imagine me and Richard Ojeda getting along famously. That seems like appointment viewing, right? <laughs> so uh, we had Richard Ojeda on. My, my white whale finally joined the program. Uh, Hack Ride got him to come on. I, I don't really know what happened, but I, he liked us enough that... Uh, he promised to come back on the show again, be our political correspondent, and admitted to a litany of assaults. So he felt pretty comfortable with us. That's awesome. Well, that's fun. <laughs> so yeah, I did. I did see people saying that you were cucking it up to uh, Richard O'Jet. I guess as soon as you meet a celebrity, you just oh, uh, right? get little, you right? get a little starstruck. Yeah. Apparently, <laughs> I get. So I, I was worried about like uh, looking like that, and I did ask him about John at the end and stuff. Uh, but I was worried about that, and then I was saying to you before the show, like. It dawned on me that Richard was doing what John should have done from the beginning. Like he yeah. came on the show and had fun with us. Who cares what is how crazy he is? Like he cut. We told him he seems crazy a lot, and he laughed. He enjoyed it. So oh, yeah, you guys talked to him about curb stop, and he's just like, oh yeah. He's like, yeah, that's what I do, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. So so he was having fun with it, and uh, he was yeah. neutralizing the target, I guess. So that's on that's on Patreon now. It'll be out free tomorrow. So just subscribe to Blind Mike Project on YouTube. And up now is the Why You Laughing episode of um, the r brief rise and rapid fall of Dat Fan. So I get more of my anger out about Dat Fan. And uh, you can also find the links to Who Are These Socials at blindmike.net. So go to blindmike.net, look for the Patreon. All the free links are there. And uh, check it out. <laughs> Douglas W. Keg says, never meet your heroes, Mike. Yep. 
Truer words. Disagree. It couldn't have been a better experience. <laughs> All right. Robert Tubox. I've got ants. ITM. In the morning to you, Robert. That is a no agenda reference, a no agenda listener. Okay. Thank you very much for the two bucks, Robert. Very much appreciated. Who are these dot coms where you want to go for all your who are these podcast needs? I just released a show this morning. It's um it's also up on our YouTube if you subscribe to our Patreon or Supercast or YouTube. If you want to be a YouTube member, you'll get uh, all the posts and the links to the uh, the shows live when we do them and the bonus shows. But we just did a show with Ray DeVito about the Rock Bottom Podcast with Ray DeVito. So we brought Ray on. And uh, I don't want to use the word ambush. That sounds a little strong, but basically, I, I said, "Hey, guess what we're doing today, Ray? Your show." And he goes, "Ah." My defense of you is you did promote it days before, so I he, he could have learned. He could have figured it out, but Ray's not a guy who's paying a lot of attention to what's going no. on around him. So he came on, and and this is the thing that I said to him, Mike, and you'll appreciate this because you go on WTP pretty often now. Sure. I go, I go, Ray. We're doing your show, but I didn't give you any homework to do. I felt like I was kind of doing him a favor on that. That is nice. If I went on and we were doing Blind Mike Project, I'd be like, all right, let's focus on Craig. Tread lightly, but I'm all right with it. Right. Yeah. (laughs) So anyway, uh, check that out wherever you get podcasts. Who are these podcasts? And if you're watching this on YouTube, also subscribe to Who Are These Socials? Wherever you get your podcasts. It might seem like it's a visual show, but guess what? Half the hosts can't see. So I love it. <laughs> it does work. It does work as an audio show. Wherever yeah. you get your podcast, subscribe to uh, Who Are These Socials. And we do appreciate your guys' support and for checking things out. Mike, anything else you want to say? Eh, see you never, folks. Who are these socials? That's what this audience wants to hear. They're like, whoa! Who are these socials? I'm the one who should apologize. Folks, what you are about to see is real. With Carl. Okay, we got it. And blind mind. Who could have thought of that? W.